Okay, given that the problem you gave um, is not super specific, I'm gonna make my, my life pretty much as easy as, as possible. And the first thing that I'm gonna assume is that when you say paraboloid, I'm, yeah, I, you're meaning this, uh, an elliptical paraboloid, okay? The other thing is that I'm gonna assume that this elliptical paraboloid is centered at zero and that it has the same curvature. And I'm gonna talk a, lot, a little bit about this, what would not having the same curvature would have be, but not too much. And I'm gonna use this coordinate system, okay? So the first thing to notice was the, the function of a paraboloid. And the general one would be something like this, okay? So this is the paraboloid that is not centered at zero and that it doesn't have the same curvature in either direction. But like I said, I'm gonna assume that it does. So this assumes is something like this, where the curvature is the same and it's in third zero. Okay, so I made my life easier because this wasn't too specific. Now we need to figure out the vertical coordinates. Uh, if you need to justify it for yourself, uh, I would start with the C-coordinate. The C-coordinate is the easiest because you have this R. Uh, so if you take this R and multiply it by cosine, you get the C-coordinate. So it's the cosine of theta. Now, this distance here, which is the same as this distance here, would be R times the sine of that angle, okay? And the first observation we make is that this distance here is kind of the same polar uh, radius that we are used to in 2D. So if in the XY plane is this. And this is the normal angle that we are used to as well. So if this is our uh, radius in the XY plane, so that times cosine of phi is X, and that times sine of phi is y. So now we just need to plug it in there, okay? So when we plug it in there, we have r cosine of theta, r squared uh, sine of theta cosine of phi plus r squared sine of theta sine of phi. And you'll see very uh, quickly why I decided to make this assumption to make my life easier. Because uh, when you factor out this r squared sine squared, which is in both terms, we get this. If we didn't, we would have had uh, one over a squared on uh, 1 over b squared in each term, and then you wouldn't be able to uh, use trigonometric identities to say that this is 1. And you would, I wouldn't complicate myself too much to simplify that term. Uh, I would probably just leave it like that. But since this is 1, we could go further, and I'm going to swap this so that it's easier to read. So it's r squared sine of r cosine. Okay, and this was one. So now we can actually divide by r, and I'm going to divide by sine squared as well to keep all the angular dependencies on one side. And you could maybe potentially leave it like that, but I like to not having any trigonometric identities. Uh, sorry, uh, functions, uh, the denominator. So what I'm going to do is move one of these signs out. So it'll be cotangent of theta secant of theta. And that would be my equation in spherical coordinates for the elliptical paraboloid, where is centered at zero and each curvature is the same. Otherwise, you would need to go and, and put those coefficients and if it's not centered at zero it's even worse uh 
So I'm not sure if that was a problem, but I took it because it's the simplest one. Okay, well, thanks. Thank you.